All right, welcome. You're watching this video because you want to know more about IDEs and how to interface our Arduino with an IDE so we can start doing some programming. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Hopefully we can do this really quick. Let's jump to another view here. We've got uh, our Canvas page open for our class. And right over here we've got our Arduino ready to go. We're going to demonstrate some of the in the layout where we can some of the parts are. We'll, we'll get back to that. First thing I want to do though is talk about our the ID itself, how you can get access to it. So please pay close attention. Let's go to here's my modules. I wanted to jump into kind of slow here this morning. Alright, so here's the page that talks about the Arduino IDE. An IDE is the short for Integrated Development Environment. Anytime we're writing a program, there's going to be some software we're going to reuse that we're going to type that program into. And it's going to help us compile it, help us to convert it into a language that the, the uh, computer understands. And ours will, the layout will look like somewhat like this. Uh, what we're seeing here is actually an online version or one you can download onto your desktop at home. And since I'm talking about it right now, let's go take a look at this. It's probably not the one you're going to use, it's sort of a backup one. I have a link right here. If you click on it, it'll take you to this page. And you have to select your operating system. And then you'll download that it does not cost anything I've already you also you can also register which I've already done with this web page and you can go do some online coding after you've registered so I'm online it already knows who I am and you know boom I go ahead and start so here's my here's my interface my IDE for some online coding I can do it we're not, this is again, this is a backup, but um, if you look into this, I'd recommend you get this version because wherever you're at, you can just go ahead and, and code. We are going to actually put an IDE onto your laptop by using the Microsoft Store. And it says Store, but it's, it'll be free, just like this web page I sent you to. And we access that through this little shopping cart right here at the bottom. If we double click on that, it opens up the cart, or we can type in Microsoft Store in the search over here. And we want to get to the, move this over so you can see it a little better, we want to get to the Davis School District stuff. Because this is what the district has made available to students and teachers. I'm going to show all 49. And we're going to look for that Arduino icon right here, this little infinity symbol. And we're going to want to install this. And mine says it's installed already because it is. And you're going to want to install this. So you'll click on it and there'll be a couple of uh, little instructions that you'll follow. And then it'll be on your computer. So mine's already there. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at it. And you should see the same thing when you open yours up. So I'm going to click on the Microsoft Windows icon and I've got a couple of versions here. One is from the Microsoft Store and this one is downloaded from the web page which I just showed you. So I'm going to go and do the Microsoft Store because that's probably the one you're going to be using. We've got a little backup in case one doesn't work. We can try the other one. You also have the desktops in our class, just right over there, and they already have the ID loaded onto them, but your laptop probably does not. So I toy around with a bunch of stuff. Yours won't open up with all the stuff in it. Yours will open up looking like, let me get rid of that one. It'll open up looking more like this void setup and void loop and then a couple of uh, comments in here and 
once you see this, you'll know you've, you've got a good IDE and everything's looking nice. Let's give you a little tour of the IDE. We have a couple of buttons right here. If we click on the, the little check, this will look over our code and find any errors. If I check out now, nothing should happen because we haven't done anything yet. And so it's compiling sketch. We see a little bar over here telling us it's doing something. This will be our, a good friend of ours because when we write our code, we'll make errors and then we go ahead and want to need some help to see if we can find, you know, why things aren't working. And this will give us little clues. It'll give us little messages saying, hey, I think you forgot this or this is missing and so forth. Now I'm not going to wait for it to look. Usually it doesn't take this long. It's being a little slow right now. But if we uh, go over the next button right here, this little arrow. Uh, if we click on that, in addition to doing what this button does, which is, really be, which is to look over our code and find any errors, this one will also send it, upload it to our, our Arduino. So it'll take the code and put it onto this board. And if you'll notice down here, this is the message we got after clicking the, this button here with the check on it. it tells us how much storage we have, how much we used. You'll notice that just adding these couple lines right here took up 1%. So we don't have a whole lot of storage space on our when we put things on our board. We won't have a lot of room, but it will be plenty of room for all the things we're going to be doing. And a couple more things. I don't want to go over too much in one video. Just just an introduction. We got a file where we can save stuff, standard stuff there. And for right now. I basically wanted just to show you how to hook up the, the board to the computer and send a program from the Arduino, excuse me, from the IDE to the Arduino. So in order to do that, we have to click over to Tools, and there are lots of different kinds of Arduino boards. I've got a few examples right here, one that's blue, one that's black, and all three of these are actually the same type of board, even though they're different colors. These are all called an Uno. You'll see the word Uno right there, and on the other one, I don't think I see the word Uno on it. But all three of these are an Uno, but they're besides this type of board, even though they look like they're different, they're actually the same board. The layout is virtually identical. The only thing that's different is the, basically the color. And when you use resources in my class, you may get a different colored board. So, you know, don't worry that they're not an Uno. All three of these will be available to us in class. But there are other kind of boards that you can use this IDE with. An example is when I have up here, I'm working on something else. And this little guy is actually called a Nano. And if we go up to tools again and I go to boards work my way over we'll see that there's lots of board selections including the nano the one I have right here but we're going to be using the uno so what we have to do is we have to make sure we tell our IDE which board we're using and oftentimes when we hook up our Arduino to the computer, it'll find it for us. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Uh, one difference between these different boards that I showed you is this part right here, this is the USB cables are gonna be hooked up to these. And they're different. This is a standard USB. And this one looks like, I always forget which one's the mini, which one's the micro. But on these two boards, the black one and the blue one, We'd use the exact same cable, but this one uses a uh, one of the micro or the mini. So we got to make sure we get the right cable. Now I've got this one right here next to me, and we can hold it up here. I'll have lots of different types. I got another one sitting on my desk here. So we got to find the one that matches our board. So if I'm using this one, I'll grab this cable here, and we'll put it into the board. 
like this. And the other end, of course, we have to hook into our computer. Like that. Let's swing this around. Some lights have come on. I don't know if you can see those very well. Letting us know that we've got some power going to our Arduino. And uh, mine, I already pre selected the board in my ID up here. So you would not have seen it trying to search for the right board. But if yours is blank, which is probably what it's going to start out as, if you go under tools, you can look down here and it probably already says Arduino. If not, you have to work across here and then go down this little menu and find the Uno and select it. The next thing we're going to have to do is we, we're going to be communicating with the uh, computer, so we need to find a port. And we want to find the generally the one that has in parentheses Arduino Uno next to it. If not, we're going to find the, the COM or the communication that has the biggest number. So if this COM31 was not here, we'd want to pick 3. But since we have Arduino Uno next to it, we're going to select that one. And so now um, our port COM31 is going to be used to talk to our Arduino board. So we're good to go. For now, we'll I'll introduce more things later, but let me pause just for a moment and let's give you a little bit of Arduino anatomy. Give you a little tour of the board just for a moment. We've got these little pins right over here. And this is where we're going to be hooking up some wires like this up to our board. And along the side of them, they're labeled. It says analog here, power here. We got a little focusing issue. I should probably set this to um, take it off of autofocus. I think I'll just leave it like this for this video. But as I turn things, you'll notice it goes out of focus. And it stays out of focus. Yeah, let me see if I can't. Just real quick, let me get the camera and remove the autofocus. Let me manually yeah, it's not changing anything. Apologize for this on the fly. I probably got the wrong camera. Probably making my myself. Let me double check this. And my face is, yeah, I got the wrong camera here. Unless I'm going blurry and unblurry. Let's leave that one on. It seems to be working properly. Well, let's jump to the other camera. Get okay there. Let's jump to the other camera and change its properties. Let's get rid of the autofocus and manually. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, let's leave it like that. Hit OK. All right, so hopefully it won't focus anymore. It'll stay sharp like that. OK, so a lot of action going on with these boards. I won't overload you at this moment. I just want to point out a few things because it'll be common to any of the UNO boards that we're using. We've got these pins, though we can detach wires to and they're broken off into sections like there's a section right here there's a little gap maybe a little hard to see a little gap in between where we can put our wires and this is labeled power over here it's analog and on this side a big long row that's a digital number zero all the way up to 13 and then we've got all a bunch of interesting stuff all around here We've got uh, maybe a couple more things, a little reset button. If you want to start our program over, we can push this button. We've got uh, a way to hook up some power. We, we're drawing 5 volts from our computer right now, but if we load a program onto here and we don't want to be, we want to untether ourselves from the computer, we want to detach that, we could hook in something like this, which is attached. 
to something we can um, hook up to a 9 volt battery and draw power from that but right now we're going to be getting our power in our program from the computer and that's probably good enough for right now what we're going to do is we're going to write just a really simple program and we have a LED, a light emitting diode right here above my finger and it's actually connected to pin 13 so we're going to write a basic program, we're going to show you mainly how to get that program onto our Arduino and we're going to try to get this LED to flash on and off so we're not going to have to wire anything at this point so let's go ahead and do that let's go back to our program, I'm going to get these comments out of here what am I doing? come on Mr. Bauer there we go so let's make this as simple as possible we want to um, let's, just take, let's just turn the, the LED on and off and we're going to write type in pin mode which is we're going to tell pin 13 that it's going to be in output nice thing about when you type things in you'll notice that when I start typing it's uh, black but then when I um, like when I finish typing in pin mode it changed colors that lets me know that the IDE recognizes this command so things changing color is, is a good sign that my program is developing properly output change colors and so forth now pin motor we're going to tell that pin 13 that we're going to send stuff out of the pin we're going to send some current out of that pin and into our LED to light it to turn it on and off and then we're going to do a digital write and we're going to send pin 13 we're going to send it to a high state so the pin is over here along this row which is our digital rails which can be high or low and we have two parameters with some parentheses here so it's expecting two inputs the pin and what we want to do with it so we're saying pin 13 we want you to set that to a state of being high or a zero or excuse me or a one and then we would like to have you just wait for a moment so you've got nothing here it just doesn't recognize what I've typed because I've just made some typos so let's go back and write delay changed colors for us so it recognizes that and delay is going to be in milliseconds so I can't just say two seconds and be done I have to that would be two milliseconds I'd have to do a thousand that a thousand is equivalent to one second notice I end all of my lines with a semicolon it's like a mad you can think of that as a period at the end of my sentence until I'm done go on to the next line and my parentheses will separate some parameters some numbers that this function is expecting and in the case of delay it just wants a number and then we'll do digital write for pin 13 and this time we want to tell it to be low go to a zero or turn yourself off don't send any current current out of pin 13 and we need to tell how long we'd like that to happen let's do another second and that'll be plenty for this little program we're going to send being in the void loop we're just going to this is going to go around and around and around and once it gets to here it's going to go back to digital write and it'll just read one line at a time and then it'll go back to the top and just keep going around now when the program first starts it'll do setup it'll take a look at this one time and say okay all right you want pin 13 to be you're going to send stuff to pin 13 which is our LED and then what we want to do with that well we're going to turn you on and off on and off all right so the main reason why I'm showing you this program is to show you how the IDE works so we've got to send this program to the Arduino 
and we're going to do that. We could just check the program, make sure it's we didn't make any errors. But this will do both. This will check for errors and it'll send it to the Arduino. So let's go ahead and do that this time. It uh, wants me to save it. I'm not going to worry about saving in this video. But we could get, name it something, put it in a certain folder. It won't let me proceed unless I save it. So we'll go ahead and just quickly hit save, not worry about where it's at at the moment. And we're waiting for a little cat break here. We're waiting for it to finish. Sometimes we have good days with my IDE and things go super fast and sometimes they I've got to wait like 15 seconds here. Okay, so over here it says it's done uploading. That's awesome. And if we look down here, you want to see if my program, which I sent to my art, do we know if it's doing anything? And it's a little hard to see. I'll, I'll get a little shadow over, over the LED here. So the onboard LED is actually going on and off. Awesome. So we were able to take this program. We were able to select the correct board from a, a list of choices. In this class, we're primarily using the Un Arduino, uh, excuse me, Arduino Uno. We selected the correct port, and then wrote our little program and sent it to our Arduino. So we've actually accomplished quite a bit. So let's go ahead and uh, end this video, and we'll have uh, some more adventures in the next one. Okay.